Hey, Daniel. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Here we are. Here we are in Las Vegas. Welcome, everybody. I'm joined by the lovely Alexander Botez, the newest member of GG Poker. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's kind of intimidating to play against you, I'll be honest. Oh, we're having fun. I know, I know. And I, I remember I told you this before, but I, I ended up playing poker because my dad taught me, and he used to watch you on TV when I was a kid. Because you're incredible at poker, but also because he's also Romanian Canadian, so you were like his god. So he's been because I've been a kid. I'm still a kid, you know that. Of course. So like you kid were watching me when you were a kid. I was still a kid, and I'm still gonna stay kid because Kid Rock's what, like 60, and he's still a kid. This is true. Um, okay, it's my turn. Yeah, you're the button. You're 50. Okay. You're gonna raise, huh? We're gonna raise. Ooh. Well, heads up, you have to play a lot more hands. This is one maybe I wouldn't play otherwise, but heads up, I'm gonna take a flop. All I'm right. We, we got some educational content yeah. too. I'm here for it. There we go. There we go. Let's see here. Stuff could happen. Wow. He did not shuffle at all. This <laughs> is a very wet flop. Check. You check. Landon told me when oh, there's God. three cards that are the same to bet Smaller. one, to bet just one blind. Yeah. So I, that's all I'm doing here. What did he tell you that means when there's, what, what is the term for that? Three of the same suit. Wet board? Monotone? Monotone. Board? Monotone. Yeah, okay, that's okay. Right. All right, You're see, betting. we got the poker terminology here. So Landon would say I should peel here, which means I'm going to fold. <laughs> see? Spade and everything. I have one spade. Yikes! <laughs> see, I already knew he didn't shuffle. So he, he, <laughs> he, he gave it back to me, and I'll take it. Thank you. Please yeah. keep this up. We're not allowed to tip the dealer, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, yeah. Oh, man. So do, do you enjoy playing heads up more or tournament poker? To be honest with you, the goal, right, is to get heads up. Mm -hmm. You know, but I love the journey there. I'm, a, yeah. I'm much more of a tournament guy. Heads up, it's exhausting. Yeah. Like, because, you know, when you play against seven or eight people, you have time in between, you can chat. Heads up, it's like, boom, 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 boom. It's like, it's like you playing bullet chess versus, yeah. you know, having your, sitting back and going, let's see here, in theory, what should I play here? Hmm. Instead of just, which no, is how I play is, bullet. This is true. <laughs> it's just raise. Raise 250. I'm pretty sure this is one of the cards I'm supposed to fold, right? <laughs> we don't play yeah, that even in heads up. Ace nine. Okay, but you are very good at, at live tells. Do you think it's easier when you're just isolating one person? Yes, that's the cool Have thing. Have I given anything away yet? No, I mean, we just sat, sat down, but like, that's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, when there's eight people to focus on, yeah. you know, you probably miss things. But when it's just one person, you're looking at them every single decision. So like, you might spot a lot more. Like, I always find that by the time I get heads up, you know, I usually have something on, the, on my opponent. Unless they're like Stephen Chidwick, who doesn't give away anything. Do pros still give away live tells or is it just oh, yeah. amateurs? See, the thing about live tells, they're subconscious. You don't even realize. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of things people do. I can't give them all my secrets away. Of but course. even some of the best players in the world, like, there's, there's things that are so reliable with them. I'll tell you one after. Okay, please. Now. Check. Two hundred. Two hundred. I will see if turn card. Call two players. Check. Okay, do you want to see the river card also? Probably. Oh, as I said, okay, here we go. Is that 500? Yeah. Big bucks. Pay. Go. Check. Okay, I give up. That's a smart move. Yeah. Sort of. I was uh, gonna gonna have a whole spiel on the river about what I'm gonna do depending on what you bet. Oh, nice. No, I. There was I, a teaching moment in here if you bet. I'm too embarrassed to even show my hand, but it's learning. So here we go. Well, in theory, you're probably supposed to bluff that on the river. On the river too. Yeah, like say. You yeah, know, but in theory, I got like, a live tell. You know. No, I'm you, you're probably. <laughs> you, I gave away a live tell. Sure, I'll see a river, blah, yeah, blah, blah, yeah, check. Yeah, exactly. uh, I was not folding. No. Ah, oh, there go all my blacks. I didn't expect this to happen so easily. And when you do find tells on these pros, is it things that you've noticed from years of playing with them, or are they things that are commonly known amongst other people in the community? So I'll tell you what, there's sort of an analogy here. I played in the, the Pog Champs. Yeah, right? I remember. And I played against uh, Pokemon. Who was Pokimane. To, Pokimane, sorry. Right off the bat, I'm like, my, I had a higher rating, whatever. Yeah, right yeah, off the yeah. bat, she's like killing me. I have no idea why. And then I realized, oh, her coach told her exactly how I opened and how yeah. to defend against it. Yeah. So like she had a huge advantage, right? 
So with poker, the analogy would be, I study my opponents on video mm -hmm. a lot of the time. I'll watch like for patterns and things like that. Sometimes I'll take a notepad, old school, and keep track. All right, he's done this 10 times, eight times, he had a marginal hand, mm -hmm. you know? And then I use that to sort of help me make decisions. Interesting. Yeah, you can study, like, I feel like- So you really watch the tapes. I do, Raise when I'm really tape. trying to get into it. These are 500? Yeah. Yes. I'll just get changed then. Okay. Like, I mean, yeah, that's the cool thing. Like, I didn't even, I, I, then I realized I had to have a burner account on chess.com. <laughs> no, you do. You can't <laughs> let people. I didn't know. I was trying a new thing. I'm like, oh, can't show anybody. And on chess.com, it's really clean because if you have an opponent, you can go through all of their thousands of games and put in the line specifically against what you play, yeah. which is why preparing for your tournament is so extreme, uh, for your opponent is so extreme in chess. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. Luckily, she didn't know what to do after like, she had the advantage in the open, so I was able to win, but. Let's do 300. 300. What would Landon do? Landon would call. Okay. <laughs> he's your coach? Um, he's one of my coaches, yeah. I also recently started working with Chance Cornet a little bit. The, that's that's yeah. a good But good I point. like it because then I have a GTO guy and a live tell guy. So together, yeah. perfect combo, you know? Chance is very good because he combines both. I think yeah. that's like what you want to do. But what I like with Landon is that, you know, and I think you're talking about something similar with Lex is 1000. He's someone who can explain how the solver works for me. So, when you're playing online poker, there's obviously a lot sure button your mind. Fewer live tells, which feels like it's one of your strengths. Do you think you're better online or in Well, person? definitely better live. Yeah. Right? Because you know, I love playing online for the comfort and, yeah. and the convenience of it. Just yeah. sit on your couch with your puppies on you and stuff like that. But then you have to focus more on, like, the numbers, yep. on the patterns. So, like, I make Sorry. notes on my opponents, you know, where I'm like, all right. And with, what's great with, like, the GG software is they show you, like, okay, who's playing a lot of hands, who's been winning, who's been losing. They give you a little bit of feedback on the players, right, to give you some kind of an idea of how they're going to play. But for me, there's no substitute to live yeah. for, my, for my advantage. Looks like someone's three betting. I oh. was thinking about it. Yeah, I know. Damn it. <laughs> He's in my head already. <laughs> oh, no thanks. <laughs> Come on, Daniel. Just give me a little nibble. <laughs> Nothing. Look, I have a king queen. I'm going to fold. No. Oh my God. I'm going to tell you what one of your tells are later. Okay, good. Because that was. <laughs> no, I, I. As soon as I check, I know, I'm like, I know. Just... It's because we're also chatting, so yep. my guard is off, you know? <sighs> oh boy. <laughs> so that's, that's a perfect example of how in online poker I wouldn't have known to fold the king queen. But because it's live. No, I, I I was uncertain and like I was calling. I but I could have been uncertain. Maybe I wanted to fold. There, I'll tell you after what you did, if you want to know. Okay. I'll tell you okay, after. I'll I'll take it. And in the comments, try to guess what it is. Oh, you guys will know. This is a that's a great one. Watch what yeah. you did and tell me. Ask what did I see mm -hmm. that made me fold that hand. Actually, one of the things that's been really helpful to me since I've been vlogging so much at tournaments is looking over it and realizing when I'm doing things that are obvious tells since. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm new to the game. These are things that are going to take time to learn. Yeah. No, that's really smart, just to, just to watch yourself. I think, yeah. you know, that's something I think Chance and Alex do, is they, you know, have you on video, look yep. at yourself. Yep, exactly. Look what you're giving away. Confidence in decision. I have no a question hesitation. for you. How frustrating, like in chess, right? You make the right moves, you win. Yep. How frustrating is it to play poker when you make the right moves and still, because of luck, lose? So I've played in the WSOP main three times, and every single time I've busted with pocket kings all in pre. <laughs> oh, man. That being said, I, I just accept it as a different part of the game. The, the truly hard thing about poker is handling the intensity of your emotions. This happens with chess as well. Obviously, when you lose a game, you go to your room, you don't talk to anyone, you don't eat. But with poker, it feels like the swings are way lower. And it was one of the things that I took for granted getting into poker. So I was like, I'm a chess player. I'm objective. I have no feelings. And then I go into poker and I'm tilted for like a week after a loss. I'm like, who is this woman and what do I do? You check? I check. Yeah. Were, were you always emotionally stable? No, I'm still not emotionally stable. <laughs> I think people have seen me. I wear my emotions on my sleeves in a lot of ways. But I have a little trick myself. So I was curious. Before I tell you my trick. Yes. Like, how do you, so in chess, right? Yeah. You know, you make a mistake. Yep. You cost yourself. Yep. Like, how do you deal with that after that's over? 
in game, it's extremely tilting once you make a mistake. Um, but Let's at double least... the blinds. All right. Mm. We'll double the blinds, and once it starts getting uh, the more variance, the better for me. <laughs> um, so in game. Honestly, so I'm going to start competing in chess tournaments again. I'm going to be playing two over the next month, and I realize that I haven't had the same amount of time to train chess. But I do care about telling the story of competitive chess, and I think to do it properly, you need to be in it a little bit. Yeah. And I've been mentally preparing for the fact that if I'm losing, I need to not let it ruin the rest of my day and see the bigger picture. But I truly struggle with it. So I, I wish I had... Yay, 9-4 takes it. So I think when, when you play chess, they're timed, right? So you're under a lot of time pressure? Yes, but your games take like four to six hours. Okay. And you're sitting there for 20 minutes while your opponent is thinking. So you kind of get used to it. One trick that I use in poker, I don't know if it's applicable for chess, but it might be, is um, when something bad happens and I can feel myself like being really tilted, is I internally, I just vent. I'll be like, you this, vent to yourself? I, this, this idiot just played a hand so stupid that's going to cost me the tournament. They have no chance. This is the worst player in the <laughs> Allow myself to do the full Hellmuth, right? Called a race with a... Ten of clubs? You called a race with queen ten, honey. In your head, yeah. So okay. I allow myself to do that, right? Then I'll sort of get present. Okay. Saying, okay, what am I, what am I, what am I feeling right now? What is, it, what is the emotion I'm feeling? Okay, anger. Is right? And then I'll ask myself, like, what are the physical sensations? My mm -hmm. heart's beating, my feet are tapping... I don't feel at ease, I'm you know, uncomfortable. So now I'm getting real conscious to what I'm feeling. Right? Yeah. Then I'll take three deep breaths, really, at the yeah. table, eyes closed, like whole new agey. And then I'll be like, all right, what do I want to be right now? I want to be focused, I want to be engaged, I want to be dominant, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I've noticed just by doing that practice of allowing myself to feel what I'm feeling, it's not instant, but a lot more quickly, I'm able to be past that. And if hand. you're just trying to hold it in. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Holding it doesn't go away. How many times do you see a poker player like two hours after a bad beat still talking about it? So often. Still like, oh All man, I would have had I would have had six million in chips, but I got a million because if that guy wouldn't have played that, I'm like, that was two hours ago, bro. Yeah. One of my favorite quotes is actually Tiger Woods. Because Tiger, if you golf, like he goes after putts, right? And like yeah. sometimes he'll really go after it. And he was asked the question, he's like, Tiger, on these when you need to two putt, like why are you so aggressive on your first putt, leaving yourself a lot more room on the second putt? Mm -hmm. He goes, because I'm not thinking about the second putt. I'm thinking about this putt. Yeah. Making this putt. That's it. There is no fail, right? Yeah. And, and that's something that's been helping me, too, because whenever I make a big mistake, either in poker or chess, I think wh whenever you're emotional about something, you imprint it in your memory better. So I try to look at it as like, I'm not going to do this mistake again. This won't be repeated. And when it's something out of my control, I'm okay with that. That's yeah. the one thing that's, that's been helpful with poker. That's a great way to look poker. at it. It's like, very similar, could I change it? Nope. That's a very similar way like, to my process in terms of like, when you, when you break down a hand. Whenever I make a mistake, I look at that as an opportunity. Yep. It's like, ooh, ooh, there's a, there's a, there's a leak here I need to plug. Mm -hmm. Aha. So the next time you see this situation, this movie, you know, you're more prepared mm -hmm. for it. The more you do that, the fewer leaks you have, the better you get. Like, again, I'm going to go to golf, 500. But right. like, when you first start playing golf, all you're trying to do is hit the ball, right? Yeah. Just hit the ball. Then you try to hit it in the air. Then you try to hit it straight. Then you try to hit a target. A pro is trying to sink it from like wherever they are. Yeah. So even them, they make mistakes and they miss, but their misses are like this. They don't have the big misses. Yeah. Right? They're getting when, closer, at least. When you start yeah. playing poker, you make really dumb, stupid mistakes you don't know what to do with, right? Yeah. As you get better, your mistakes are like, ooh, I should have bet 750 instead of mm. 825. You know, like, really finite. Like with chess. Yeah. That's the thing I... Well, chess, I'm blabbing here, but with chess, I find the hard part is, like, as you get better, it's so much harder to get better. 200. 200. <laughs> oh, 200, yeah. Raise. Ooh, check yeah. raise. All right, you win. All right. I... I think that's what I'm doing here, or calling. Who yeah, knows? I would mostly call that hand. Yeah? Yeah. You had me dead. I had 7-8. Fair. Mm. I should be a little slower. Well, that's not about how fast you did it. Just that hand on that board. Yeah. Like, you're out of position. So, if you check raise, you're making the pot bigger. Mm -hmm. And if I call, a lot of bad cards come. No, Ace, this is true. king, jack, nine. You know, it's not an easy spot for you. So, Makes you're like, sense. basically, you're overplaying Overplaying my hand. You yeah. should be, like, more polar there. Or have like just a gut shot, nothing. And do or, like, it or the strong nuts. hands. Yeah. yeah. The middle hands are the ones you want to call up. That's fair. See, I know what I'm talking about. Um, GTO that. So. So <laughs> potentially tough question, but what's been your lowest point in your poker career, and how are you able to overcome it? Lowest point in my poker career, man. There's been so many. 
<laughs> well, of I course. mean, that's good because yeah, that's, like, I mean, that's how poker usually is, right? You know, when I was <laughs> 500. <laughs> for, uh, 500. Well, it was a long, long time ago. But it was kind of fun. Because, like, I kind of romanticized the early days of being broke. Okay. Like, coming to Vegas for $3,000. Yeah. Like, I'm going to crush these guys. I'm the best in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. 24 hours later, I have no money <laughs> whatsoever. Oh, and no. And I'm walking back to Budget Suites, the motel I was staying at, thinking about, like, what I was going to do the next day. I'm just contemplating life and my life choices. But it was, like, low, but I woke up the next morning ready to go, ready to borrow some money and get back in the game. But at that point, you were still confident. Like, it never broke your spirit, which is... Well, no, in the, that's because I think one of the things that I innately knew, even before I thought about this stuff, is that I always knew it was better to deal with your emotions in the moment rather than like, ooh, nice fold. I have straight. Oh, wow. I have a hand you're supposed to go all in with, according to... Oh, that's know. true. Yeah. Ace four, nice. I had but eight, ten. Mm. But that's something I've always innately kind of mm. understood. It's just like... Authenticity. I love authenticity, and I'm worried you about this generation. You are so authentic. Your generation, I'm worried about. No, I'm worried about it too. <laughs> and with public figures, what I really appreciate about you is how authentic you are, and how you just don't give a fuck. And you could see it. And you know what? Sometimes it rubs people the wrong way. Great. But at the end of the day, people know that what you're saying is what you believe. What I realize, especially being a social media creator, is that you start authentic, but then you start being a slave to the algorithm, mm -hmm. and you also just start tweaking your persona to what you think people want, which is something I'm completely working on cutting out of my mm -hmm. habits right now. 500. But I, how, yeah. how have you been able to stay like that? What's the secret? Confidence. I was, you know, I had great Romanian parents. I don't know if you know anything about that. No idea. But my parents loved me. My mother fed me. She said I was never wrong. I have a letter. It's, it's funny. It, she kept this. It gave it to me as a birthday present like 10 years ago. When I was 10 years old, there's a letter from the principal that, sa that says... 2000. To Mrs. Negreanu, in, in, due to your son's poor behavior and manners, we will have no choice but to take, remove him from school. No. Because of the fact that you support him in every possible way and you never think he's wrong. I'm like, you're right, because I'm never wrong. That's a wonderful parents, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I did. Have, so what is it, 9, 2000? 1500. 1500. 2000, yeah. All right. All We're right. A pot. We have First a hand. One. Yeah, no, I think, I genuinely think that, like, Whatever it's, whether you're influencer or all that, I mm -hmm. think people genuinely appreciate authenticity more than anything. In a fake world that we live in, the Instagram world where you always have a filter and you look perfect I and know. your life's amazing and look at how great they are. Meanwhile, those a lot of those people are like crying in a bowl of ice cream at like 2 a.m. because they're alone and sad. <laughs> 1,600. <laughs> what? Okay. You're going for it, huh? All right. She's going for it. Now what? Turn. That's the hard part. The hand gets more complex. I have no idea what to do. I'm trying to. I'm trying Phone to think of, of what you could be possibly playing. I mean, I'm not used to playing heads up, so like the yeah. ranges are very different for me True. to try to put you on things. Mm. So most likely, it's straight draws, a jack, a nine, yeah. pocket pairs, ace high. That's what I'm going to have most of. Do you want to say it again, but start with the one you have? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll check to you. 2,000. 2,000. It's a very small bet. It is a very small bet. In the old days, we'd say, finding out where you're at. OK. But, but they don't do that anymore. Kids, they laugh at that. They don't try to find out where you're at? No. Do 4,500. With another small bet. Thin value, as they say. Thin value. Hmm. hmm. Can you beat a jack? No, but I can beat no jack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's the. Uh... <laughs> I uh, I have one of these. Ooh, you have so you have two pair. With a I very, have two very pair with kicker. a really nice kicker, yeah. Nines and fours. There are nines and fours. Like, what are you called? I mean, I guess you would be called. I don't think you have a quad nines. So that would be really sick. I do not have a nine. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of a jackie or like any other 
pair. Uh, any other higher two pair. Um, well, other thing, two pairs would probably re-raise pre. That's right? true. That's like true. Aces, kings, or queens. I would have four bets. So what about tens? Tens is very thin. Ten, ten, tens is very thin. Mm -hmm. um, Landon told me that you usually play your hands pretty straight up. So if like it's not that big of a bet, probably I have it. Maybe. Probably maybe. But you could just be trying to get me to pay a little bit. Reverse, reverse. Um. I think you have it. I'm gonna fold. Oh no! <laughs> What's the other card? Don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> Does he want to oh. see? Yes. Okay, a four. <laughs> Feels better, man. Full house, absolutely. I, I have no idea how in heads up you're supposed to like consider this is what someone's playing with because I haven't played enough. But you you live and you learn. Yeah. Heads up is a completely different animal. Well, I gave you the full spiel. You did. You did. All no, true. it was helpful. I didn't um, mention four. So with poker, like you, do you just like right now you're playing tournaments or do you like cash or both? So I like tournaments more than cash. I th I think it's nice to have a limit. It feels less gambly mm -hmm. and it reminds me more of chess because in chess tournaments you're playing like 10 days of six to eight hours of chess plus the prep before so it's like 10 hours of chess every day so it's kind of a marathon whereas you know cash is great but it's usually one day that goes really long whereas yeah tournaments are the closest thing i have found to chess and i still enjoy chess but obviously it's less fun when you're not a beginner so i feel like i get to be a beginner again oh for sure which is the best feeling i'll tell you when i was young starting out mm -hmm. i looked at cash as a job like mm -hmm. that's my job during the day so that i can afford to go play tournaments. That makes sense. Because that's a lot of fun. Yeah. No, I, I really love tournaments. What is that, 1,200? Oh, 1,200, yeah. Yeah, no, I like the fact that there's a, a, a you know, like there's a beginning, middle, and an end, and a trophy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely. You got to get the trophies. And, and honestly, navigating Check. the cash scene is really hard, and tournaments are just so much more straightforward. Yeah. Well, there's, you know, it's interesting, too, because, like, when you play tournaments, there's a lot more things to think about, you know? Yeah. Way. Right? Because you're like, okay, this guy's short. Will yep. I make more money if I fold? I have yep. a short stack. How should I play? Like, how do you play when you only have 10 big blinds or 100 big blinds? Yeah. There's a lot more variables. And cash, yeah. you know, it's just kind of like autopilot. What is that? 11? I'll play for 11. And I know that, you know, online poker has had kind of its sure. recent wave of controversies lately. What do you think about it, especially the ones recently about GG? Well, here's the deal, right? Ever since I've been in poker, I remember way back when you had all these stories of, of cheats and stuff like that. Anytime yeah. there's a lot of money involved, you're always going to have people that are A, trying to cheat, and then you have B, you have the police, if you will. You have the organizers. Yep. You have the, the, you know, the people, who, the operators, who it's their responsibility to stay one step ahead. Of course. Right? And so they the, don't want these guys either. Of course, <laughs> yeah. right? So you've got like the cheats trying to figure things out, and then you've mm -hmm. got like the tech guys over here you know, trying to stay one, you know, one step ahead of them, right? And mm -hmm. we're always going to see that, you know, but I have a lot of faith and trust in like the team at GG, mm -hmm. right? And there's, all, like I said, there's always going to be people that try. And GG yeah. in the last couple of years, you know, they've released 60, I think it was 200 different accounts that were trying to do stuff. Like if you are going to try to do things on there, you will get caught. I mm -hmm. have a firm belief of that. That doesn't stop people from trying, right? And yeah. that's always going to be the case. Whether you play live or you play online, there's always people when there's money on the table that are, you know, potentially going to do nefarious things. Yeah. So I think honestly with online poker, it's kind of easier to catch them because you have all the data. Right. Like if I think you're doing something with your sister and I'm like, wait a minute, how come when they're on the same table, they don't bet hard against each other? <laughs> well, then you bring that up. I bet even harder yeah. against my sister, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> right. But in theory, so like then we could like, they could look back at all your hands and sort of really have a good gauge. Yeah. Of what's going on. And we have really... Like now we have, you know, Fedor Holtz. Yeah, the, I saw he's the new He's one of the best integrity. poker players in the world. Of course. And he comes from that world, mm -hmm. so he understands what's going on. And I think it's really important to have players. This Me, is similar to Chess.com. They bring some of their top players, obviously not going to give any names, to be part of yeah. their anti-cheating team because there's certain subtleties that, you know, computers are going to catch up to it. But for now, you need these people who understand things that feel fishy. Sure. Do you think online poker is 1, the net positive for poker? Please. Oh, I think net, online poker offers a couple things. One, the convenience, right? It introduces people to the game, so that maybe they will play live and stuff like that. It's a less intimidating environment. I would imagine too for like women, right? Like I actually don't mind at all being a woman in poker. You're a special kind of woman. Yeah, right? okay. You know, not all women are built like you. Just saying, 
You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you're, you have a lot of self confidence. You know what you're doing and stuff. I grew up playing chess. Right. For some, you know, it can be an intimidating environment. Whether yeah. you're a woman or a man, yeah. like coming into a poker no, it, room. It is. I, it actually, I mean, the first time you go, it's intimidating. You don't know the rules. Yeah. You don't know if you're like. I remember stories of even like the famous skier Alberto Tomba, big, yeah. strong, macho man. Right. We came to play a tournament, and he didn't know the rules. He bet out a turn or something like that, and he got a penalty. And he's like, "Oh, I, I can't play with you." You know, he was really. He felt really uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. So with online poker, you know, you get past that. You get more comfortable. You learn the ins and outs. You know, you learn how to play. Then maybe you play live. And also just the convenience. Or like my dad who grinds, you know, half cent, one cent. And every now he's like, so, you know, I've made $80 in the last round. And like, he doesn't care about it. He just likes playing. <laughs> yeah. Should we double the blinds again? All right, let's do it. Four, eight. Do-do-do. Kick it up. Okay. I like this. Play okay, so, so, so speaking of fun... One thing I've noticed, kind of similar to chess, poker has a bit of an audience problem where it, it's not always the most entertaining for the viewers unless it's something cut and it's the best hands. What do you think are some of the things poker can do to keep growing the audience and making it more accessible? So I look back at the history of poker and what's worked and what hasn't worked as far as mm-hmm. I'm concerned, right? What has worked historically really well with the mainstream is edited shows. Yes. Right? Because then, because you, like, you know what poker's like. Right. Sometimes you go 30 minutes, there's nothing interesting going on. Yeah. If you're a diehard poker fan, you love these live streams. Right. Because like, you feel oh, like you're in the moment, you even though there's a moment. delay. But right. yes. <laughs> but if you're like, you know, like me, I can't sit there and watch a seven hour stream. Yeah. Just give me the clips. Right. Yeah. So I think doing a good job of taking those streams and making the, like, the two minute clips, the mm-hmm. one minute clips, also just editing down, like, yeah. the best hands and stuff like that is a really good way to do that. But ultimately, like, what poker has in terms of, let's say, high stakes poker is, mm-hmm. it's such a serious endeavor now yeah. that you have a lot of, you know, like, how much is the bet? Yes. It's just so you serious because the they're playing for a lot of money, person, right? Of course, and yeah, I don't blame them. They're not they're there living. to entertain. That's yeah. not, you know, their job. So you have that being like, you know, a big part of what you see in these shows. I think continuing to create content with just like fun people. Yeah. People that actually, you know, like you. Your, your streams are always fun. You bring a really fun crowd. Mm-hmm. Check. Eight hundred. Okay. Eight hundred it is. Well. This is gonna be it. This is gonna be the hand. Is this the hand? I think it might be. Okay. You're either gonna double or or not. <laughs> Check. Who's more likely to have a six here, me or you? Okay, so Landon gave me this tip, and it's like when you guys both have the likelihood of having something, keep betting. And I thought that was this, but I could be wrong on the range. Got it. Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think in a heads up, it's different. It's okay. different. Like, if it was eight people, then yeah. it would be me. But heads up, you're he- playing. Yeah, he- yeah, heads up, it feels like we both have right. similar likelihood here. But I could, again, I check. I'm learning. She's in the tank, deep. Huh? <laughs> you leaving yourself a, a crumb, just in case? Seven times. She left herself a crumb. Usually when people leave themselves a crumb, they're bluffing because they want to save a little something for bus fare. Or maybe <laughs> I thought you were going to think that. Or maybe you have an ace. I'm all in. Damn it, Daniel! <laughs> this is bull. <laughs> oh, she left a crumb. I Were you bluffing? Cr- yeah, I was bluffing. I had a seven, though. No, I had a six. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a little better. See, that's what I, I knew when she left a little crumb. Oh. It's probably a bluff. I'm still gonna put. Well, it in. hey, my crumb survived. Your crumb survived. I'm gonna have some fun shoving. Okay. And it's gonna be the biggest comeback story ever. Hey, I've seen won't. it happen. Who knows? We don't take it easy. Just because you're new. Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> like if it was chess, you're not going to let me win. Oh, cool. So who is more likely to have a six in that situation? Yeah, it's actually a good question. I'm not on, I think me. Okay. But, but, sl- but slightly. I-, I thought it was negligible. You, you way more likely to have an ace. Way yeah. more likely. You always have, have an ace there. Like, and I... That's actually a good, as far as I'm concerned, it's like theoretically a good way for beginners to learn how to play. 
is to go, who's more likely to have a really strong handle? Yeah. Like you or me. Which, yeah. whose range is it better for? No, I actually, uh, the first poker theory I learned was for heads up, and it actually made me understand ranges, I think, a lot faster, because it's just more simplified. Yeah. So I think it's a good way, actually, for beginners. Yeah. Although to heads up is tough. Oh, the it difference is. with, yeah. like, heads up is, like, okay, you have queen five. I'm like, that's not a good hand, is it? Well, like, yeah, but heads up it is. Wait yeah. a minute, you know? All in. All in. Be it. Are you robbing me? We'll see. No, thank no, you. I have a monster. Okay, you did. I had Jack Four suited, Good. but oh, Jack Four! If yeah. you called and beat me, <laughs> investigation. Jack, Jack Four off. Investigation. And then, and then we could run it back. You know. Speaking of you know cheating and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Like, you know, like that happens. In, like, there's always stuff going on. Mm -hmm. People are always trying to. Do you think she cheated? I don't. I'm not. Listen, I don't. Th I think it's above zero, right? Okay. But I don't know. Like, I never would have accused her in the moment. I never would have mm -hmm. gone that route because. Without evidence, you know, it's not a thing to do. Yeah. It looks really suspicious, but I don't know. Like, we had fun. Me and my wife, we were in bed trying to figure it out. And then she saw the pants she was wearing. And she's like, oh, I know what those pants are from. They're from this line. And da, da. She was doing, like, her detective well, she, she work. She was doing her investigation. Yeah, because, like, there was a shine on her pants, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, no, that's the design. And she was like, look, these are the pants. They have a ripple right here. That's what's shining off the light and all this stuff. It was like, doing The doing female stuff. brain. Oh, God, yeah, yes. she has that. that all right. Is now or never? All in. You know, I should, just in honor of Mr. Doyle Brunson. How much is it? No. $1,425. 3400 For Doyle? You know Doyle. Of course. You had Doyle beat, but... I actually got to play with him once. It was Did really, really cool. At, on Poker After Dark. I got some great Doyle stories. All right, you know, just for Doyle, we're in Vegas, right? I got Doyle Brunson's favorite hand. He's won two World Series of Poker Braces with it. I'm going to try to win I, this championship. I know I'm rooting for you. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> For Doyle, let's let's prove the value of this hand. People don't okay. know how good it is. Ten All right, deuce. come on. Let, let, let's see it on the river. That would be fun. <laughs> okay, we're still live. Definitely. Any deuce, any ten. Yep. All right, still need a deuce or a ten. We said the river, so it's coming. You did. Well, you okay. know, I, I'll leave it to Doyle to play those up in heaven. 34. 34. You so, go. you know, in most of the competitive players, you're one of the few who's still super chatty at the tables. Are you a dying breed? Yeah, I think at the highest levels, certainly a dying breed. I think they'll, it'll make a comeback at some point, but... Do you think there's any advantages to your style of poker? But I, I, I guess, I mean, there obviously are, but I think it's just so hard to master, right? I think the advantages are this. I've been under the lights for most of my life. Yeah. It's my comfort zone to be chatty and talky, yeah. talkative under the lights. It's maybe not as comfortable for others. Yeah. You know? Like, I've watched some of your videos when you go play street guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're comfy. You're shooting shit. Yeah, no, you're this, just like, this, this is what feels normal to you. You're I, like, you're beating up on the New yeah. York hustlers and stuff. It's like, you're comfortable. Sometimes I'm at a poker tournament and they put me on the TV table and I just feel more comfortable because I've streamed for five years yeah. now. You've, 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 you're used to living your life as though there was a camera on you at all times. Basically. Something to be said about that. If there was a camera on me all the time, that might be a problem for me. But, <laughs> but it's fine. What am I doing here? I'm gonna go all in. Run it back. Oh no, I was bl bluffing bad. <laughs> bluffing bad. I'm I got like, nine. Oh my god. I paid him off. I'm Thank so you. dead. This I'm is for really you. dead this time. Good action. We a big double. Double, double, come on. Okay, I'm dead. Yeah, this is gonna be a problem. This is gonna be a long distance win. Nope. How much you got? Uh, Seven. I have five here. 68. Six. Six. All that work I did, and it's just all for naught. For Doyle. <laughs> 68. <laughs> Let's kick up the blinds again. One <laughs> and two. Yeah, okay, One fair. and two. Okay. Fair, fair, fair. Now we're really playing poker. Good. Hmm. Well, hey, at least anyone can win in poker. It so definitely have you won is... a poker tournament? I have. I won a turbo. Oh, nice. Um, in Bahamas. It was just playing for fun. It was like a 550 turbo, and I ended up winning, which was pretty cool. What's your biggest cash? Um, probably the WSOP main. It's like How much did you get for that? 17,500. But I was so free you... rolled, so I got to keep it, which nice. is nice. That's a um, good deal. No, I mean, my, my, my craziest game was definitely the, uh, you know, cash game where I played against the creators, oh, and I yeah. ended up walking oh, yeah, with I like half that. a million. I was, which I was, was like... And you were, at it because you were upset about Phil. I was watching it. And I was like thinking there's so many good lines for you that I wish I could have written for him. 
Do you know who Next he does Next time this I thing? play against Phil, I'm yeah. going to just ask you for a few jokes and I'm going to surprise him when you least expect You made it. this call against Phil where he went all in with like mm -hmm. ace eight and you called with ace nine. Yeah. And he's like, da, 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 da. and then I mean, in that, you know, he's, he's, he always says he's got to read. He's got to read. He's like, just, well, Phil, I read you as weak. <laughs> and I was right. I read you as weak. He would just Damn lose it. it. I wish I had that line. That <laughs> yeah. would have been excellent. Well, Phil, I mean, I read you as weak. It was obvious you had ace eight. I mean, who didn't know that? Next time I tilt the pro, I'm going to use that. I read you as weak. I read you as weak, yes. <laughs> and then just watch them look at me angrily. I read you as weak. One of my... Especially if you make a dumb play. That's even better. But one of my toxic personality traits is I get true enjoyment out of tilting people. Not to the point where it's serious, but just where I see them a little uncomfortable. I watch. I, I knew that about you just from watching your chess videos. Oh, seriously. When, like, you really get under these hustlers' skin. You're like, you just... You know, they're cursing under their breath, and you're just mocking them as you're, like, just, like, you know, just, yeah, <laughs> just yeah, beating yeah, yeah. them. <laughs> and they, 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 before they don't even, no, it's fun. I like those videos. No, I, I appreciate it. And, and you, you did you, one with your grand, like, you were dressed up like a grandma. Yes. That was funny. We were in, like, 12 hours of prosthetics to get ready for that, but it was worth it. Yeah. And I, you, I love all those kind of, that, that genre video. How often do you watch chess videos? Um, I, when I was into it for a while, I was really watching, like, I watch a lot of your stuff, and mm -hmm. I like, you know, some of Hikaru's stuff. And yeah, yeah, some yeah. Gotham. And he did some lessons with you for Pokemon. I did lessons with Hikaru, and I did one with, with Gotham as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Who know. was a better teacher? You, being completely honest, like, yeah. I think Gotham had me at, like, understanding stuff. I got two pairs. Ah, me too. Oh, you win. In a different world, could you ever see yourself being a professional chess player? Uh... Is that a lifestyle you think you would enjoy? I don't think so. Why not? I don't know. Like, you tell me. But I think it's like, I mean, first of all, to be at the top level, you have to work a lot, right? So much. You have to dedicate Which your Which is life why to it. whenever I see chess players coming into poker, including myself, I have all the trauma of the amount of work it took me to get to this level in chess. Like, and now you're starting over. Yeah, and it's fucking terrifying, but also extremely exciting. I think it's more fun for me to, like, be really bad at something. Yeah. And then, like, the journey to get pretty good. Yeah. It becomes less fun when... In order to get like one percent better, you have to work really hard. That, that, that's, that's what chess point. feels like at me. That's Diminishing the breaking returns. point where you get like, okay, do I do I care enough? Do I want do I want it bad enough? Because if I do, I know the sacrifice it's necessary. Yeah. And in this case, the sacrifice is all in. Ooh. All the money. All really the money. All in. <laughs> is the Doyle Brunson ten two off or ten two suited? It's both. Okay. You got Doyle? You're going to beat me with Doyle? Well, I, I do have 10 2. <laughs> Suited. But, like, I really want to win. So I got a fold. Okay. I had a pair. Okay, it's nice. Fold. Even though, if, if I knocked, if you would have winked at me, I would have called. You just need to give the signal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, every time you play poker, I imagine, like, you learn something new. Yes. That you're like, aha. And it's, and it's so fun. Yeah. It's so cool to be able to do that again. Oh, sorry. What I meant to do was not that. What I meant to do was this. Okay, we'll let it slide. We'll Thank you. We'll allow it this time. We'll allow it. Yes, that right. is what's known as a string raise, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Totally illegal. Right. Would get her banned in Louisiana, Texas, and New Orleans. But over here in Lake Las Vegas, we, we allow, allow it. it. <laughs> Friendly vibes. Call it the Lost Love. Um, I, I saw that you were commenting a little bit on the Ike mask controversy. And without digging too much into that one in general, do you think competitive poker is moving towards letting, having people just do like sunglasses, mask, and covering everything possible? Yeah. So my, I'm gonna check. So my take is this. Like, I'm, you know, the prisoner's dilemma, right? Yeah. Like if everybody did what you were doing, what would be the like long-term effect, right? Right. So the question is, you see Christoph Vogel saying, who, you know, completely covers himself and all that. If everyone did that, what do we have as a viewer? Yeah. Right? So again, aside from, you know, the reasons for wearing masks or whatever, I, I put them all in the same category of covering your face. You know, like, should you be allowed to cover your face? I've been against sunglasses for a long time. Interesting. I don't think sunglasses should be allowed at the poker table. I don't think you should be able to cover your face. Yeah. Right? Again, I understand, you know, there are health reasons why some people, you know, choose to. But it is undeniable, undeniable that it is an advantage, period. The question is, well, if it's an advantage, I, I, I why doesn't everyone do too, it? You know? Why doesn't everybody do it? Yeah. Then? Well, some people don't want to for you know their own yeah. you know reasons, but just because like and again, I, I think it's 
Like, I think it's a bad look if everyone covers their face and does that sort of thing. What if people only cover their face when they're playing in tournaments, but if they're on a TV table or anything like that, they're not allowed? Like, I don't some think, mix. I don't think it should matter, really, because mm. um, part of, like, here's the thing. If you want to play poker without the physical aspect, you can play in GG. Of course. Right? You've, yeah. got, that for, you've got that available. If that's what you're, you know, you're, in, yeah. you're too afraid to play live, then go ahead. But if yeah. you want to play live, part of it is people skills. And I saw a couple of people tweet this, and I'm like, man, you guys really don't know what you're talking about then. They said, well, there's no tells in your mouth. That, that, is, what, that blew are, are my mind. Are there any tells in your mouth that you can share? I have a whole book on tells that are directly from people's mouth. Yeah. Pursed lips, smiles, awkward smiles, grins, smirks. This is going to be me playing heads up. I'm just going to hold a well, smile you know, the entire you, time. You think so, but like, I'm telling you, so you, can you tell, like, this is a fun exercise for people who want to learn poker. Watch five different smiles. Tell me if they're authentic or fake. Interesting. If you can spot a fake, if you can spot a fake smile, what's the fake smile about? Mm. Mm, right. You like I talk a lot, so yeah. part of what I do when I'm talking, let's say I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a read from you. Yeah. I might talk to him, and I'm like, why did I even play this thing? It's so stupid. She obviously has it, right? I'm actually looking at you right now from your peripheral. Yeah. So I'm actually this. God, is a, he's such a master. Take notes, everybody. This actually happened. All right, I'm gonna pause for a second. This actually happened. Yeah. It was, it was playing in a WBT or something. I was on the river, the board is like ace, ace, seven, three, deuce. Yeah. I have ace, ten. Player raises, and I have ace, jack, so. No, no. I had, yeah, I had, uh, I had ace, jack. Okay. Okay. Now, he bets all, all in on the river. And I'm like, whoa, I don't, I mean, you could have ace, king, and have ace. So I look yeah. at the deal, I go, why did he even play this hand in the first place? You know? Because he was giggling, right? He was smiling, laughing, because, you know, he's got, he knows he's got the best hand. And I go, then I looked and I said, well, what if he just has like ace, ten or something? And then it smiled, he went, oh, <laughs> like no. this. Because he had ace 10. So now I made the call. He had ace 10. Yeah. He ended and up rivering me, actually. It was on the turn, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but the point is, is that people's mouths, you know, there's a lot there. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, I, I like, really love the psychological oh, aspect of poker. And that's something that was always missing in chess, where it's literally just mm. perfect information. If you played well, you're usually, I mean, yes, there's some luck with like opening traps and stuff like that, but most of it. How much does body language play a role in chess when like you're playing against somebody and you can tell that they're like, like losing it, like they're tilted? Honest, for most people, it doesn't matter at all. Doesn't make a difference. Does not make a difference. Like, I've maybe, heard, you know, like guys yeah. like, uh, you know, like Magnus, you yeah. know, say that he can tell when his opponent's like. I have five, seven. I don't think yeah, I'm allowed to nice call name. that. You're first. Hmm. What to do here? Do we shove or do we just bet? I'm enjoying the conversation. <laughs> okay. Raise. Me six, too, but I want to put it all in. All in. Raise all in. What? <laughs> There's a five over there. I got blackjack. Okay, I have five four off. <laughs> yeah. I see. You are, you know, uh -huh. should I go all in or should I bet? See, that was a, that was a good. I was, I was trying to see if I could reverse psychology that was good. you. That was actually quite good. Okay. Because you made it seem like you only had two options. Yeah. Right? You planted that in my head. Where good. Like, she has to have a hand. Yeah. The question is how good. So you scared me off of it. Nice. Well, I just had a good hand. No, you did. I know. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have changed what you did. No, but now the, the thing I do want to try is I've noticed some of my live tells but I don't want people to know I've noticed them. And like, it would be really cool to get super good one day where it's like a fake live tell. Fake ones. But no. I don't, that, that feels very ambitious. All right, I'm gonna tell you what you did on that A6 hand. Okay. For the, for the viewers, yes. right? The flop By came now they out. would have commented yeah. already. Now you get to see if so it's So this right. is what happened. The flop came out. Okay, you were looking at the flop. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I'm looking at the flop. embarrassing. Looking at the flop, you went. <laughs> <laughs> flop went out and you were like. <laughs> So yeah. that is the yeah, number looking one, at your chips. the most number one basic tell you'll find, especially with beginners is, the brain doesn't realize they're doing it. Yeah. You look at the flop, and if you don't see anything you like, you keep staring, yeah. right? But subconsciously, when you see something you like, the next thing you're gonna do is bet chips. So your eyes quickly glance yeah. over there. And when you see that, I mean, if you can learn how to fake that, that'd be pretty solid. Oh, I'll work on it. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna work Cause as though. soon as you did it, I'm like, nope. Right I'm flag, here, yeah. I'm not betting. No, I, I mean, and the good thing is we're talking, so I'm on autopilot, so I don't, so I don't yeah. have the time to catch myself from doing these. But I think even trying to build these habits and get them, get rid of them, even while I'm on autopilot, would be nice. Okay, so usually the button has all the aces, but you limp, so maybe that's not true. So do we bet here? 
I guess it sounds reasonable to me. <laughs> hmm. Actually, let's not use blues. Let's keep it simple. How much am I supposed to bet here? Are you even supposed to bet? Am I even supposed to bet? All right. Well, I, I looked at my chips. Do you have a king? Didn't I? Or was I trying to fake out? I'm saying, do you have a king? Do you have a king? Simple question. <laughs> I mean, it's a simple question. Do you have a king? I don't know. You can pay and find out. I'm Six not thousand. paying. I'm not going to pay, but if you have a king, you win. Mm -hmm. I have a nine. That was good too. Okay. <laughs> no, maybe should be check trapping here. I mean, but then again, I had a pair. You I had, had a pair. You had threes. Mm -hmm. If I, what was the correct thing to do there with nine eight? You, that's too little too thin, with nine eight for that size, right? Yeah. Because you, one of the things you want to think about is when you're va you're, you're doing one of two things. You're either mm -hmm. value betting, or you're bluffing. Always. Yeah. That's like when people say, why did you bet? Well, I was thinking, no, you're either value betting or you're bluffing. You know, it, 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 you either want it does me to call, feel too thin, but it didn't feel like you had an ace or a king there. Here's what you need to think about, though. Generally speaking is my calling range, right? Yeah. If I'm going to call you there, I'm going to mm -hmm. call you with an ace. I'm going to call you with a king. Yeah. I, I might I, call you with yeah. a better nine. So the question is, do you beat call, more get, hands? Yeah. Do you beat more hands that are going to call or do you do you lose to more hands? that are? No, gonna... you're right. I mean, I was only getting called by better and folded by worse. Maybe. Yeah, probably. Because yeah. I'm good. <laughs> Very true, yes. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll go 6,000 again. Okay, fine. Only because it's a special Please. hand. Special hand? Yeah. It's got a name. Okay. Hmm. She's like going through a list of names. Dirty Diaper, Doyle Brunson, <laughs> Robbie. Yeah, you don't know the old school names. That's true, I don't. Very small bet. Bro, you don't have anything, but I'll just go all in. You have nothing. <laughs> right? You just have nothing. Okay, is he seeing my cards? No. Like, <laughs> what is happening here? This is ridiculous. I have my own favorite hand. What's your favorite hand? That's Ten my seven. favorite hand. 10-7 okay. offsuit. Figured I'd just put it in, not let you catch anything. You weren't going to keep bluffing. You were done. White flag. I was done bluffing. <laughs> it was a very weak bluff. Okay, so I don't know how to play when I have less blinds and heads up. I mean, I'm assuming... Probably just all in. All in probably. or fold? No, you could limp too. Or limp. Prob probably all in or fold for the most part. I already part. said or fold, so okay. I gave away that, that I have a, a weak You were going to get snapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Can we come back? And in the World Series of Poker, you're going to be playing that? Yeah, so then I'll, I'll, I'll be trying to come out here for most of the WSOP. Do they have, do they, they have like women's events, right, for chess? They do, yeah. And what do you think of like chess events for, and poker events for women? I actually like them, just in terms of you get to make new friends. Um, and it, it, it's nice to have ladies' night sometimes. And you just don't really get it in poker, and most of your friends are dudes. So I think it helps you meet people who you might get along with a little bit better. I don't really have anything against them. Okay, good. Yeah, because I, I'm curious. I was curious your take on that because like yeah. there's, there's two sides of it, right? What are the sides of it? Well, a lot of people have said, well, listen, it's a game of just intellect. So yeah. why? Sh it's not a physical game. So yeah. why wouldn't you put, you know, like mm -hmm. why would they have special events for ladies? Yeah. I think, especially because poker is male dominated, that it's like a smaller group of women. It's like allowing them to congregate and play amongst themselves is a good thing. And it's a different vibe, you know, like. I, I believe true freedom is allowing women to congregate amongst themselves if they yeah. want to. What's wrong yeah. with that? I, I don't see it as like women need their own section because no. they're worse. I see it as like it's sometimes nice to have women friends who play the same thing you do. Yeah. I the think Robbie. So. Right. I remember years ago, there was, some people, there was like a lot of this. There's always been discussion about, yeah. you know, are they good for poker? Are they bad for poker? Do they set a precedence that, you know, women are less than? They yeah. need their own little category or whatever. The this is actually is. something I've been thinking about female only titles in chess where, you know, when I when I grew up, like it was cool. I was like, oh, there's this title because you don't think of it as a kid. But then when I got older, I was like, I'm kind of embarrassed to have one of these because it's kind of implying that the bar is lower for women in chess. Um, So I've actually been really torn about those. That's what I was getting at. Like, yeah. is it, you know, the question is from a competitive standpoint, Oh boy, here we go. From a competitive standpoint, we got hand. She got a Ace real 10. hand. I got a landing Ace hand. <laughs> Suited. Poor Landon just getting getting all the <laughs> shout outs today. Um Okay, yeah, you're you're gonna win this one. I'm again. Just gonna you win just win every all, all in. Ins. 
Okay. What okay. Do I need now a jack. To yeah. Chop? Is it coming? Nope. No. How much yeah. now? F female only tournaments. I'm. I feel different about than female only titles because I think those events are more just so you can meet some other people who play the game. But with female only titles, that's making a completely new achievement just because you're female. Like we don't have female PhDs. Why do we have female titles? But then I ask these young girls when I'm at tournaments, and I'm like, what is keeping, what are you mo excited about in chess? And they're like, I want to get this title. So I see how excited it is, exciting it is for the young girls, but I'm also torn about it. So I don't know what the right answer is. I'll tell is. you, so my assistant who's been yeah. playing for, you know, she's been with me for a long time. Yeah. She plays one event a year, every year. Yeah. It's the ladies' event. Okay. That's like her, that's her World Series of Poker main event. She loves yep. it, you know, for various reasons, but... Uh, it's like right. a, it's an appointment appointment tournament, right? Yeah. And I think there's a lot of women who come into town specifically for that, and I don't see how there's any like, yeah, any downside to it. Now, are we going to have the argument? Is it as tough as a all male tournament or an open tournament? No, but yeah, that's, but that's not the so point. What? <laughs> like, who cares? Yeah. Like, two and four, yeah. Yeah. Do Do you think players play differently against females? Yeah. No, I think. What about? Pros and amateurs. I think, I would say this. This is interesting, but of the top females in the world, uh -huh. they generally lean more aggressive than male players. The Vanessa Selfs and This is and true with chess players, too. Right. They generally lean even more aggressive, the ones at the top. Now, as a whole, women in general, you would suspect them to be a little more passive, yep. not as aggressive. The top women are way aggro. So Jen Shahadi, she plays poker and chess, and yeah. she wrote a book on this, and she explained how women feel sometimes like they have to overcompensate exactly and play that. more aggressive. Every time, I, again, I don't think I was yeah. supposed to be calling these. No, I had a good hand. Yeah. No, that's you know that's actually like spot on true. That it's you interesting know, that it's true for both. But I also think too, as a woman, there are so many advantages to being a woman, mm -hmm. right? That you can manipulate in your own, you know, to your own benefit, right? Taking advantage of like the male ego, mm -hmm. right? Um, understanding how they perceive you one way or the other. Sometimes they give you breaks, take them. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, you want to play nice, nice with me? Cool. I'm going to cut your throat, but you can play nice, nice with me all you want. Check. And also, um, like they're um, underestimated Yeah. in a lot of ways. Check. So, you know, some people might be in a spot like, yeah, a woman would never be, do that. A woman wouldn't bluff here. Yeah. The, the stereo, I always hear that people think women don't bluff. Yeah. And then that's what I was going to say. You are bullying I, me and it's not cool. <laughs> but once have, again, uh, I'm not super excited No, I had here. a big draw. Okay, nice. Straight flush draw. Well, both. But that's the thing is like you look at Vanessa Selps who kind of broke the mold really. Yeah. For women in poker. Yeah. And then, you know, now Kristen Fox and super aggressive and a lot of the women that play at the high stakes tournaments, like I said, they're more aggressive than on average. Yeah. Than, than their male counterparts. Hmm. So then maybe the reputation is that novice women don't bluff. But yep. Top women are even more aggressive. And this is well, well most known. people don't. I, I don't think most people have actually into, like thought about it that way that I yeah. have. But I've, I've noticed that pattern hmm. with women at the highest levels or generally like for the compensation reasons. Yeah. But more often than not, people see, oh, like a woman at the table. Yeah, I'll just bully her. Okay. If you know that, you can just like yeah. trap them. And, and, do you, and do you think pros think like this too? Because I feel like pros make so many fewer of these mistakes. They make fewer of them, right? But, you know, we all have our own kind of like, oh, how much more? Not much. <laughs> I have such a bad hand. The Dirty Diaper, another name hand. I love the Dirty Diaper. Okay, she just wins every all in. Okay. I'll you're, never get You're the knocked. favorite again. Staying alive. Come Staying on, alive. Deuce 3 one time. No, Dirty Diaper is my favorite hand, actually. There you go. Oh, We're there you go. Halfway there. Deuce you're 3. Doing it. Finally got it in good. Okay. No paint. No paint, we win. Boom. Add this. Where's my trophy at? Where's my trophy? Uh, I won the Canadian Romanian championship. You know what, Daniel? <laughs> that was bullshit. Let's play a real game. <laughs> you run a chessboard. Oh my god. <laughs> This is going to be embarrassing. Are we really going to play?